Hide and seek. The clock struck ten. Cook took Puss to the barn. Anne made the fire safe. My shoes will dry here, said Cook. I got them wet when I went to the post. She set them on the hearth. Anne put out the lamp and lit a candle. Then they went up the stairs to bed. As soon as all was still, out came the mice. Creepy creep. There were mice from the cupboard under the stairs and mice from the cellar. Some came out of holes in the old walls. What shall we play tonight? asked Grandpa Mouse. Hide and seek, said Brownie Bob. Yes, hide and seek, said all the little mice. But it sounded like squeak, squeak, squeak. Six of us will hide, said Brownie Bob. The rest of you must sit in a ring with tails in the middle. Shut your eyes and do not peep. Wait till you hear us call. No one will find me. The mice did as he said. They put their paws in front of their eyes and they did not peep. Soon they heard six squeaks. Such a hunt they had. The moon shone in through the window to light them. The first mouse was found behind the door. They found the second mouse in a dark corner. Grandpa Mouse spied the third mouse in a plant pot. One was under Cook's easy chair. The fifth mouse was in the stick box. But where was Brownie Bob? They hunted and hunted, but no one could find him. Come out, Brownie Bob, and show us your hidey hole, they said. You have won! Brownie Bob did not come out. He had gone to sleep. Soon the mice crept away to their snug beds. Brownie Bob's mother was the last to go. She was very sad. The clock struck six. It was morning. The sun shone in through the window. The birds began to sing, and Puss mooed on the doorstep. Cook and Anne came down. I hope my shoes are dry, said Cook. She put one foot in a shoe, but she drew it back in a hurry. Oh, a mouse, she cried. Out jumped Brownie Bob. Anne got up on a chair. She did not like mice very much. Round and round the room darted Brownie Bob. At last he popped into a hole behind the dresser and got safely home. The next time he hid in Cook's shoe, he took care to come out before her foot went in. By Edith E. Millard